Hello. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. I'm Graham Elwood. So, uh, <laughs> Tuesday, April 11th, Sean Spicer said that Hitler didn't use chemical weapons uh, to gas his own people. I... <laughs> Sean Spencer is the press secretary, and this just shows you how inept and insensitive the Trump White House is. And this wasn't just like a fumbling of words, because sometimes like somebody fumbles words or they just say something and then the media jumps all over it because it's a 24 hour news cycle and you gotta constantly keep the, the controversy hype machine going. This was not that. This is more evidence of the Trump White House not caring at all. I'm going to reference two articles. One was from Alex Edmonds in The Intercept, and then the other one was on the Hill.com uh, that was done by Jonathan Eastley. So uh, <laughs> the significance of this is not just showing how insensitive Sean Spicer is. It's during a Holocaust Remembrance Month, the Trump administration didn't even acknowledge that. And it also <clears throat> is important because as we've been talking about Syria and Assad, so the whole thing that Spencer is trying to show the connection is that Russia has done something, is helping Syria. So Assad then is getting help from Russia and Assad has done something worse than Hitler. That's what Sean Spencer was trying to say, which is... Six million Jews, seven million uh, non-Jewish Russians, another seven, uh, several million uh, Polish people. Like, I, I think when people throw out Hitler, they need to kind of maybe read some facts on that. So this is the kind of uh, a, a scary nonsense that they're talking about. So. What I'll give you some examples, first of all, just about how kind of insensitive the White House is, and then really go into what this is about with, we've been talking about recently, what's going on with Syria and what this really actually means. So in the, the article from thehill.com, the White House failed to mention Jews in a late January statement marking Holocaust Remembrance Day. During a February news conference, Trump told the Jewish reporter to sit down after he asked about threats against Jewish community centers. So this is the sort of treatment by these uh, rich white guys. Um, and, and then if you go to the Intercept article, um, they go into the specifics. So more than a million people were killed by the Nazis, by the poison gas Zykon B, which is a derivative of cyanide, just at the Auschwitz cap alone. And uh, Hitler stockpiled large amounts of sarin gas during the Second World War, but never used them on a European battlefield, according to the American Chemical Society. And the Holocaust Memorial Museum estimates that, as I said, Hitler's overall death toll includes as many as 6 million Jews, over 7 million non-Jewish Soviet citizens, and nearly 2 million non-Jewish Polish civilians, people with disabilities, gypsies, and an undetermined number of political prisoners and LGBT people. Um, so this is... <laughs> When you've got the deep corporate state maneuvering at every turn, it's puppets like people like Sean Spicer get a little tangled up in which fucking insane narrative they're supposed to spew. So what is commonly used, as I've talked about, so America, and you saw it from the last, you, as I said, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all these people were like, praising Trump for these airstrikes last week. And America likes to always think of itself as the hero, the, the country that's the hero, we're the white hat country, you know? And the reference is always made to World War II because Hitler was very evil and we stopped Hitler. So then it's, 
the left has made way too many mistakes over the last 20 years comparing any sort of conservative to Hitler, which is why when we get a guy like Trump who was actually talking the way Hitler did as Hitler was running for office and trying to gain power and saying xenophobic stuff, Trump was saying that crap too, but you cry the Hitler wolf too much, then when a guy actually shows up that could potentially be this evil, nobody hears it. But as it relates to the Assad Syria issue, so now we're trying to justify airstrikes because Assad is using chemical weapons against his own people and they're always, how many women and children gotta die? I just was watching a guy on Anderson Cooper on CNN saying, how many children need to die? And this guy was like, who was opposing it was like, wait a minute, we need to get all the facts. He goes, I'm not against women and children. I just want facts before we jump into another war. And the thing that they can't, where no one can argue with, or at least they're, I don't know how they can, is when they talk about, we got to get a regime change. Okay. As I've said numerous times on this show, <clears throat> if Assad has actually used chemical weapons, and I have huge questions about whether he did or not, but let's say he did, regime change hasn't worked. We got rid of, as I quoted General Mattis saying, we, we invaded Iraq and then just pulled down a statue and then what? We have no plan in place. Oh, there's articles about, you know, they were pressuring Obama to do more airstrikes against Assad. And he wouldn't, it was former Obama people that were either praising or encouraging Trump. And this comparison that Russia is backing another Hitler type in Assad is just more dangerous rhetoric. So we're, you know, I don't know what the fallout is from the Tillerson uh, Putin meeting, but we're, everyone's talking war, war, war with Russia. They're a superpower. Like do people understand we're not, if we go head to head with Russia, we're not deposing Saddam Hussein or Assad or somebody like that in a small country. We're talking about Russia, that Putin was part of the KGB. There's that old KGB element in Russia. Like, are we really going to go head to head with them? Is that the, what everybody wants is a war? Because it seems like everybody wants war. I just, that's all I'm hearing on the news. They want war, 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 war. And it comments like this, Sean Spicer saying Assad's worse than Hitler, basically. And then of course his facts are wrong. And the Trump, oh, the fake media. No, you're fake. Everything you say is fake. The media is just corporate and stupid and has helped you. So pay close attention guys, because it's really weird and it's really crazy who's coming on board with the attacking of Syria. And look at what happens. Tulsi Gabbard came out against the bombing in the, the airstrikes in Syria last week. And she's taken shit from Howard Dean. He's another fake ass fucking liberal. She's like, hey, and, and I was in Iraq. I had friends from Iraq that didn't come home. And, uh, you know, let's not rush to any, like just ask, that's a, this is part of the deep state thing. You read anything from Noam Chomsky or anything from Chris Hedges, this is how they work. Anyone that questions the corporate state is, oh, you're a bad American or you want women and children to die. We're not allowed to question starting a war, a proxy war, which really we've already kind of been in a proxy war since 2011 in Syria with uh, Putin. So. I'll put the links below, support the show on Patreon and uh, you're supporting independent media and like and subscribe because I'm not, no one's in my earpiece. There's nothing, I have no earpiece of anybody producer telling me what I can and cannot say and what questions to avoid or which ones to sort of softball. I'm gonna ask these questions because th this is all, I don't quite understand what's going on other than we're set for either World War Three. Or, a, or just a full-on like Vietnam-style proxy war with Russia. Thanks for watching.